Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Joining us today is Scott Jimmer He is the director of product marketing at Brocade. One of the things we, we hear a lot is the emergence, so to speak, of Ethernet as a storage protocol. And I don't necessarily want to uh, attack Ethernet, but I think there's some uh, key values that the Ethernet storage uh, market claims that I think we should examine as it relates to fiber channel, right? Because in, in my uh, research, depending on which study you want to believe, somewhere between 60 and 80% of the market is still fiber channel based for storage. Is that what you guys find too? Yeah, absolutely. And we don't expect that to change because there's some inherent benefits why customers continue to buy fiber channel. Absolutely. So if I break down the kind of the what I hear is like sort of the ethernet claims, right? Number one is going to be uh, performance, right? It's faster, right? Number two is price. It's cheaper. And then number three is complexity or in, in their case, it's simpler, right? right. So let's kind of examine the fiber channel response to that. So first of all, let's talk about performance. Um, is Ethernet faster than fiber channel? Ethernet has speeds today, 1, 10, 40, 100. Fiber channel being deployed today, 16 gigs. So when you compare the, for the fastest commonly deployed speed, you're really comparing 10 to 16. So is there an advantage there? No. Now they'll go up to 40. Uh, in our case, as an industry, we recently announced Gen 6 Fiber Channel, which will also add speeds of 32 and 128. So in the case of 40 gig and 100 gig Ethernet, we now have 32 and 128 gig Fiber Channel to really uh, compete head to head there. So then what we're talking about here is my connection from the server and potentially from the switch to the storage that is now running uh, 16 gig commonly available FCIA announcing uh, 32 gig so those th that's the speed of those connections right? right now where does the 128 connection come in now the 128 will eventually make its way to host and storage okay. target but primarily the initial uh, use case will be in inner switch links so maximizing the amount of bandwidth to connect switches together without using all the front facing ports just for you know single speed 32 gig links okay so I think that kind of takes care of the performance problem right? absolutely uh, so let's talk about price this might be a little bit touchier right let's let's talk about price is is the first thing I hear, I think of when I when I hear about price and Ethernet being cheaper, is I don't think we're always comparing apples to apples. And that the first thing they're talking about when I hear some of the price uh, price per port numbers is they're using let's just say non enterprise class enterprise uh, Ethernet. Right. Uh, but what else is in there that you, you would want to talk about from a price perspective? Well, when customers are comparing price, they're generally looking at you know 10 gig Ethernet storage. Uh, opportunities and and they should really be looking when they're looking at fiber channel 8 and 16 from a cost per port perspective 8 gig fiber channel is less expensive than 10 gig okay and then when you start looking at 16 gig versus 10 gig not only are you getting the performance advantage but from a cost per port perspective, they're at or near parity, depending on the type of uh, switches that you're looking at. And I, and I think in a, in a storage network perspective, when I'm building a 10 gig Ethernet storage network, I'm going to make different and probably higher quality decisions, therefore more expensive decisions, than I would if I'm building an IP network to connect my users together, right? Right. And they got to look at all the things when they look at the cost. It's the availability concerns. It's the amount of storage uh, interface capabilities they have both on the host and switch level we believe when customers add all that together you know again 8 gig fiber channel is going to be less expensive and then 16 gig fiber channel is going to be at or near parity. So really that's one of those situations where you got to sort of look at the total cost uh, of the solution, right? Exactly. All okay. right. So I think we, I think we can knock out price then, right? You feel good about that? Absolutely. All right, now the real hard one. <laughs> fiber channel is hard. I've heard it a million times. What's what's hard about fiber channel? Where do we get that reputation? I think when you're comparing 
Ethernet, which a lot of these customers know, love, they've deployed it everywhere. They know Ethernet. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't know Fiber Channel. But for the customers that have deployed Fiber Channel... And remember, that's what? Somewhere between 60 to 80% of the market. So we're not talking about like five guys in, you know, right. in, in, somewhere that, that know it. We're talking about a whole bunch of people that know this technology. Right. And they know it. They know how to deploy it. They know how to manage it. And more importantly, from a complexity standpoint, a management standpoint, most people view their fiber channel infrastructure as a set it and forget it kind of infrastructure. They build it once, they add hosts and storage targets, and that's it. The network stays up and running. They're not maintaining it or they're not spending a lot of time managing it just simply because it's running and working all the time. Well, and I think one of the things that, that you had mentioned in, when we were talking uh, earlier was uh, when we were talking about Gen 6 fiber channel and sort of that set, uh, set and forget uh, sort of concept, I can plug a Gen 6, if this is a 16 gig environment, I can plug a, a Gen 6 fiber channel switch in there and basically do no harm to the rest of my environment, right? Right. The, the backward compatibility of fiber channel makes the overall management and scalability of fiber channel networks really easy for customers. They can add switch capabilities where they need more capacity and they could add new speed technology into a 16 gig environment. They could add a 32 gig Gen 6 switch and it'll auto negotiate to whatever it's connecting to. So complete backward compatibility that makes it really easy to deploy new technology. So what I'm hearing is that we can argue uh, about how hard fiber channel versus ethernet is uh, from a complexity standpoint on initial setup, but it sounds to me like ongoing operations this is, this is something you're just done with at that point. It just keeps working. Right. And, and that's what customers love about Fiber Channel is this mentality of they don't worry about the network. They spend their time configuring servers or they configure storage. They're not sitting there constantly looking at the network and how it's running and what they need to do to keep it up and running. Perfect. Well, I think that takes care of the complexity thing. Scott, if I'm in that 60 to 80%, I think we just knocked out some of the three big advantages. Again, not necessarily saying about anything necessarily bad about Ethernet, but if you've already got that, you've already gone through the learning curve, you've already made a lot of the investment, I don't know what the compelling reason would be to switch. There really isn't any, and on top of that, there's a compelling reason to stay in Fiber Channel because there's lots of innovation happening there. We've got Gen 6 coming in a couple of years that's going to add more performance, lower latency, you know, better throughput, and on top of that, better manageability and higher availability. Perfect. Scott, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me.